Hey guys, what's up? Jed here with another video. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're all having a great day. So in this video, we're going to solve linear equations with fractions. With any equation, the key is to isolating the variable. And when it comes to fractions, the denominator is the thing that poses the biggest problem, the number at the bottom. So even though we want to isolate the variable and that's our primary focus, our secondary focus should be getting rid of this denominator. So let's see how we can solve this question. 3x over 4 minus 5 is equal to 2. Although you can get rid of the denominator first, it's going to be much easier to get rid of this minus 5 first. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So minus 5 plus 5 cancels it out, and it leaves us with 3x over 4, which is equal to 7. Of course, this 2 added with the 5 gives us 7. So now we can get rid of this 4. Think about what this 4 is doing to the numerator. The 4 is dividing into the numerator. I mean, that's what a fraction is. It's the number on top divided by whatever's on the bottom. So this 4 is dividing into the numerator. So all we want to do is we want to do the opposite operation of that. And the opposite of dividing is multiplying with the same number. So I'm multiply 4 to both sides. OK. Now, what this does is, if something is being divided by 4 and you're multiplying it by 4, those two values cancel out. So the times 4 and the divided by 4 will cancel out, leaving you just with 3x. However, on the other side, the 7 now becomes 28. 7 times 4 is 28. So we're nearly there. It's become a one-step equation now. And this 3 is being multiplied to the x, so we're just going to do divided by 3. And this will leave us with x is equal to 28 over 3. If the question doesn't ask for you to leave your final answer in a specific form, you are more than fine to leaving your answer as 28 over 3. If it does request for decimals, then of course you have to perform the calculation on this to get decimals. Or if it's the calculator paper, just type it into your calculator and click on the SD button to get it into a decimal. And that's pretty much how to solve a linear equation with fractions. It's a simple example, but it goes a long way to demonstrate how to approach the problem. Okay, let's take a look at another example that's slightly more complicated. Here we have 3x minus 2 all over 2 plus 1 over 4, which is equal to 2. So remember, you want to isolate the x, that's your first priority, and your second priority should be to get rid of the denominators. There are two fractions here, and they both have different denominators. So here's a nice little trick for you to be able to get rid of the denominators very quickly and efficiently. Find a common denominator between the two numbers. The easiest way of getting a common denominator is multiplying the two numbers together. So 2 multiplied by 4 gives us 8. This now becomes your multiplier on both sides of the equation. And I'm just gonna show you what happens when you do this. So I'm just gonna say again how we got this eight. We multiply the two different denominators together and this will give us our multiplier that we can perform on both sides. And this should eliminate the denominators. Let's have a look. Eight multiplied onto three X and eight multiplied onto two. So because there's an operation between the expression the multiplication distributes into both terms. So 3x multiplied by 8 gives us 24x. Minus 2 multiplied by 8 gives us 16. And this is all over 2. Plus 1 multiplied by 8 is going to be 8. And this is going to be over 4. So if you've forgotten, when you're multiplying whole numbers onto fractions, you just multiply the number onto the numerator, which is why the denominators are staying the same after the multiplication. And this is equal to 2 multiplied by 8, which is 16. Okay, now our next step is to simplify each fraction. So I'm going to start with this one, which is easier. 8 over 4. 8 divided by 4. Well, this is just 2. And here, everything on top is being divided by 2. So I can distribute the division by 2 into both terms. 24x divided by 2 leaves us with 12x. And 16 divided by 2 leaves us with 8. Lo and behold, 
the denominators are gone. So this idea of multiplying through by the multiple of the multiplication of the denominators is a very powerful idea. It may not be the quickest way of doing it, but it's it's a very safe way of doing it. So now let us simplify this equation here by collecting like terms. There's only one term with an x. However, there are, there are two terms that are numbers. So we can combine them together to get the following. 12x minus 8 plus 2 is minus 6 equals 16. And now this becomes a two-step linear equation. So we're going to add 6 to both sides, and this should give us 12x equals 22. We are now going to divide both sides by 12 to isolate the x, and this should now give us x is equal to 22 over 12. And of course, if the question hasn't asked you to simplify your final answer or hasn't asked for the answer as a decimal, you are perfectly fine to leave it just as that. And this is how you solve a linear equation with a slightly more complicated problem. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example where all of the terms have denominators. And I'm going to show you how to approach this. It's going to be no different from the previous two examples, but it's going to require the combination of both. So let's begin. Step one, since all of the terms have denominators, we need to find that common multiple for the denominators at the bottom. And I said the easiest way to get to such a number is to multiply them together. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4. That's going to be 6 times 4, which is 24. So we take this 24 and multiply it to both sides. Okay, now let's multiply this 24 into each term. So 2x times 24 is going to be 48x. And 24 multiplied by 5 is going to be 120. And this is all over 2. And of course, the 24 multiplied by 4 gives us 96 with an x. And 24 multiplied by 3 gives us 72. And the 24 on the other side is going to multiply with 3 once again to give us 72 over 4. Okay, now we can take a look at the denominators and see how they can simplify each term. So here we have 48 over 2, which gives us 24x. Here we have 120 over 2, which gives us 60. Now, this part is going to be a bit tricky, so please just stay with me. We have 96 divided by 3, which gives us 32x. And 72 divided by 3, which gives us 24. And this is the part you have to be very careful about. Since this minus operation is applying to all of the terms on top, so this positive 96 now takes negativity and becomes minus 32x after, divided, after being divided by 3. This 72 is actually a negative 72, and this minus operation applies to the entire expression. So this 72 will also absorb the negativity. Since it is already negative, absorbing another negative will cause it to be a positive. So that's something you have to be very careful about. And now this is equal to 72 over 4, which is 18. Simplifying the left-hand side, let's collect like terms. 24x minus 32x. This gives us negative 8x. And collecting the numbers now. Minus 60 plus 24 will give us negative 36. And on the right hand side, we have 18 still. So now this just becomes a two step equation. We add 36 to both sides, which leaves us with minus 8x equals 54. And now we divide both sides by negative 8, which gives us x is equal to 54 divided by negative 8. So once again, if the question does not specify how you should leave your answer, this is perfectly fine. However, just out of good form, instead of having the negativity on the denominator or the numerator, you could just put it to the side like this, 54 
over 8. And there it is. That is how you solve a linear equation with fractions where all of the terms have a denominator. Guys, I really hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.